How we doing, folks? Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex. I'll be your host for the next half hour. Let's set that timer. We can treat this as a free 30-minute consultation where I can be your professional career advisor. If you would like, it could be academic, it could be on life, it could be on corporate and becoming a corporate cowboy. I'd like to think of myself as developing into a leader, developing leaders. <laughs> so this one comes to us today from, uh, from Reddit. I'm pulling it from career advice. No, sorry, career guidance, r slash career guidance. And uh, just for a proof of life, today is Saturday, September 10, 2022. Let's go ahead and get started asking for advice so the question is is it smart is it smart to let my employer pay for my masters and that's a good question just off top just off top I would like to think that it is I'm thinking why not why not if you can get your employer to pay for your master's degree and it's and it's in a field that will that will empower you and and help you you know to, to leverage make more money uh, the experience that you gain from you know that education that that knowledge that skill that I'm assuming you will be honing through your master's uh, courses and in the curriculum at the end of getting that degree if it equals higher pay more opportunity more leverage or um, better marketability in whatever industry it is you're going into because again let's be mindful of just what master's degree you're getting into me personally I'm assuming coming from a question on career guidance might be a master's for business admin, an MBA. And um, I think those, if you can get paid for, for free, at this point, uh, a corporate cowboy might negotiate it as, as being standard, right? As being standard, especially if you're in a field that already, that where a master's degree is like the, the standard, like, like entry level, if it becomes entry level, like that's the only barrier to entry is having that master's degree and your employer is willing to sponsor you to do it, essentially pay for your studies to go get it. Fuck it. Go get it. But if it's a master's degree in like a <laughs> in like a soft science, I mean, no, no, you're you're better off. I mean, you you may be better off not going the way of the master's. In that sense but again if your industry is in soft science say it's in psychology sociology and you really see yourself pursuing that PhD later on getting that clinical experience and actually practicing in that field as a type of researcher a type of uh, counselor uh, a psychologist psychiatrist I mean that requires even even more even more years of study than just the masters but but your employer is willing to pitch in a bit it's something to consider and if they're willing to sponsor it completely pay for it completely I mean that's that's a lot to consider so like the title says like the title says my employer will pay for my masters in full it's saying nice we're starting off nice I recently started a new role in supply chain at a large defense company the only downside to obtaining this degree is that I have to pay back any courses completed within my two years of me leaving the company. So, in theory, the program will take two years and I have to stay an extra two years unless I want to pay back the degree. I've heard promotions and pay bumps are hard to come by, so I might be stuck at the same pay for four to five years, but we'll have a free master's, or I could just roll without the master's and take my chance at a new gig in three years. Some have called this mindset golden handcuffs, so I was just curious to get others' opinions. 
Aside from pay, the company I am at right now offers great retirement and as good of PTO slash work schedule I've ever seen outside of other defense jobs. So it's not like it's a bad place to work. I'm relatively new in the supply chain world with only three years experience. So five years in the same role seems a bit daunting to me at this point. If anyone has experienced anything similar to me, please let me know. Now, I myself haven't, haven't placed myself in a position, haven't put myself in a position to pursue an MBA, not yet at least, but at this stage of my life, um, you know, having, having gone through law school and, uh, and now I'm, I'm just, you know, an, an advisor, a legal advisor of sorts. If I had the option, if I had the option, and granted, I am taking into account this golden handcuffs mentality of, you know, having to go through a two year master's program and then being tied to the company for two years, uh, otherwise having to pay back the degree, having to pay the company back for having paid for your degree, right? Given, given the options, some calculation, some calculation has to be taking place. Some calculating must be happening in order to determine whether or not it's more economic to have the company pay. And when this person is saying that um, promotions and pay bumps are hard to come by, I mean... We need a little bit more context of what they do currently with their employer, what position they're in, uh, you know, what the span of control is like above them, and what kind of obligations slash responsibility they have to handle, and you know, what other departments exist within their proximity, departments that they interact with, and you know, whether or not this master's degree will actually help them solely for the position that they're in, or if the master's degree will help them improve their positioning within the organization as far as business relationships and business interaction between the other departments it's it's th this becomes a, a little bit more specific i feel like if i had uh, an intake interview with a person in this particular situation, obviously we would want to dig deep on what their position is currently with the organization, what kind of what kind of integration, what kind of integration they expect from obtaining a master's degree. Because again, if they they get this master's degree and then are just with the company another two years it's something that they could have done at the company without the master's degree and they've lost you know a one or two years of additional time and, and they say so here so they might be stuck at the same pay for four to five years but they will have this free master's degree that they could just you know uh go out and and apply and interview for other positions that will then take this master's degree and allow our applicant to capitalize on the fact they have a master's degree. If the company they're with now doesn't really bump them up in pay or doesn't really appreciate or uh, adjust their salary for having obtained this master's degree. I mean, if, if the, the compensation for obtaining the master's degree is just two more years of work, I feel like that becomes uh, somewhat trivial as far as the exchange in value where this where this um, the, the, the organization might just be paying for your education and still receiving some type of write-off still receiving some type of write-off uh, for, for doing so in addition to the value that you create within that company in whatever position it is that you're employed in. So 
you got you got to take that in, you you know you have to take that into account in order to really contextualize what these golden handcuffs or how these golden handcuffs might manifest right and if it's the opportunity cost that you're worried about shit start start scoping out uh, other jobs now that might offer similar programs or uh, are in the same vein of work that you are interested in because I mean that's not to say that the company you're at now is the one that you want to be at for the rest of your career right but if the company right now isn't giving you the benefit of the doubt that you are worth more with an MBA than without, then you might want to ask yourself, really. You want to ask yourself whether or not this organization lends itself to uh, you moving through it, right? If you can't move up it, if you can't ascend, if you can't be promoted, if you can't make more money, then you ought to move through it like a professional. Assert yourself. Assert yourself as a professional. And you can do that within two to four years' time. It's a two-year program, and you got two years of <laughs> indentured servitude. So I don't see why not. It, I, I don't see why it couldn't happen. That's all I'm saying. If you have two years to develop yourself, um, the, the two years that you get your MBA, you could still be at the company, right? But at, in addition, you'll be going to school and be able to assemble a sort of network while you're there. And then in the two years that you are working with the company, you are, will be better able to develop that professional network and further cultivate it into, into something that can yield that can yield you opportunity opportunity to move out at the end of the four years it doesn't have to be five but like you, you, it could be like immediately when the two years are up you're up and out moving and grooving applying applying what you've learned I was going to say applying to another job, but no, essentially applying what you've learned and have been able to accumulate in terms of knowledge, skill, and experience. Something to think about. Let's take a look at, um, at some of these comments here, and we could also comment on them, at least uh, give a, 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 more, a, a more informed opinion of how others might view your situation and whether or not they have a good take or a shit take. We'll see. The first comment here is at the top and it states the worst case, worst case is they just make you pay it back? Question mark. That's basically an interest free loan. Sounds like a good deal, right? And I was go. I was venturing along the same line. Where if the school is receiving some kind of kickback for having paid for your education, really all, all the all the ex what they expect in return is for you to stay on the two years, right? Having to pay it back. If you don't know what it looks like having to pay it back, they may apply some kind of condition or a term uh, in the form of interest. On you paying it back because you're more than likely you more than likely will not be in a position to pay it back in one fucking lump sum right so if, if they're going to have you pay it back if you leave if you should leave early and are then required to pay it back it's gonna be something along market rate and uh, and or could be negotiated again if you want to uh, assert yourself and research and investigate just what type of interest uh, can validly can validly be negotiated for uh, this this person is saying it's an interest free loan which I highly doubt but you want to see just what kind of interest can be imposed on on, on a note of this kind on a uh, a loan on a, a a money agreement of this kind it says um, 
sounds like a good deal to me, it says. If I if it were me, I'd look into if there are any tax consequences, though. I would consider if the value of the courses would be considered taxable income and whether you'd get that back if you had to repay the company. Also, a valid consideration. I would consult with a tax attorney if you have the means to do so. The next comment here says, it sounds like you have two options. Either one, you go for the master's and you stay four years, right? That's two in the program and two in the company. Number two here says, don't go for the master's and stay for the three years. And they say, personally, you are only talking about a one year difference, which isn't that big of a deal. The master's would cost you how much? They're asking 30K, question mark. That's a 30K bonus vested essentially and you can leverage that master's degree for future employment slash compensation opportunities yeah i, I really didn't take the uh, the cost of the master's degree into consideration because if the organization is willing to pay it for you you either have you either have the option of seeing it through seeing it through the four years or staying there the three just the three and not uh not getting the degree Right, to move on to the next to the next position. Um, the cost at the end of the day, if you choose to go the master's degree, the cost is not something that you want to eat, right? Um, unless unless you are a finesse god and uh, you become a corporate cowboy overnight. And in that master's program, you bump into somebody that uh, is of that, that is of high repute and uh, high connectivity, just a radioactive person and can plug you in with the right people where that $30,000 or whatever uh, number cost, whatever value cost master's program is reduced to essentially zero. If you choose, uh, I mean, within a relatively short span of time, if you choose to leave the company before the required two-year tenure is up right so if you should meet somebody with that kind of connection and you just want to bounce out with the master's degree you would effectively have been paying for the education regardless but but cultivating on the side a professional network of your own to be able to leverage i mean it, it, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around folks who go to school and don't cultivate a network. It's it's baffling. It's mind-boggling how you how folks would consider the college experience as just one of shenanigan shenaniganry, fuckery, debauchery, and no fucking networking. <laughs> but I mean, that's me. What can I say? The person here says, my vote is to go for the master's, but finish it as quickly as you can. I mean, yeah, it, the, the master's is, is a two-year degree. And, and I feel, uh, I mean, at least that's what the original poster is saying, that the master's is a two-year degree. So um, most schools, at least in my experience, most schools, their curriculum is set up to have it be completed in two years, unless unless there is some kind of accelerated program that the school offers that our original poster may not be privy to, is not savvy on, just doesn't know it exists maybe. But uh, I, I have known some students and I've been in, that, uh, in, in this category that will take classes over the summer, squeeze in one or two classes or whatever the limit might be over summer, over summer. And in that way you finish the required coursework for your degree in advance. It may or may not be an entire semester, right? It may or may not be an entire year or a trimester or a quarter. However, it is that the school does that uh, from term to term, but um, it will at least alleviate some of the future course loads uh, in, in future terms. It, it would alleviate the course load in future terms so that the closer you get to your graduation date, essentially the less courses you have to take because you've been front loading them 
in your early semesters and in your earlier terms and in addition taking some during the summer as well. This next comment states here, double check the wording. Double check the wording, it says. This goes with any contract, with any fucking contract. But <laughs> the person here says, that this commenter says, double check the wording. Some places say two years from completion. So you'd for sure be there four or more years. You'd for sure be there four or more years. I, I'm not... Maybe um, maybe this commenter didn't check the wording on the original post because that's effectively what our original poster was getting at when they said that they would be at the same company in the same pay, in the same position for four to five years while they went to school and got this master's degree. Now, I'm not knocking this commenter. Maybe they got something to say. Let's continue. It says here, they also often don't cover the cost if you get below a certain GPA. Yeah, I mean, that sounds typical of a, uh, of a sponsorship slash scholarship. So, it says here, there is added pressure on that front. Also, if you are new, I would wait and see what the actual workload at work is like and ask yourself how comfortable you'd be paying back the company if you had to leave before the allocated time frame. This makes sense. You wanna check what the actual workload is at your company. And if you think, if you think that you'll be going to school full time and then working with this company, I mean, that's, that's something that you want to bring up early, early on when you negotiate this type of sponsorship, whether or not you'll be doing uh, the school work or the corporate work part-time or full-time what can be leveraged uh, what um, how how best to organize one's time to be able to satisfy obligations in in both of those uh, circles and in, in both of those spheres in the school sphere and the work sphere because if you're working full-time and I mean, at this point, I'm being more, I'm not being extremist, but I'm being um, cynical. I'm being cynical. I'm being somewhat realistic where if you are working full time and a corporation, if, if a corporation wants to, uh, I'm not going to say exploit, but if a corporation wants to capitalize on all available time you have, it's going to be 40 hours minimum. It might be maximum 40 hours you're full-time and you're going to school and and uh, and they respect your school schedule right so that means you'll be having to go to school part-time and if you become an evening student oof, this might become a curveball where if you become an evening student now the MBA goes from a two-year program unless the original poster failed to mention that the two-year MBA program already was an evening program but if you're going to school during the night, typically the, 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 the course load for evening students is reduced, which means that means that the amount of time you'll be in school to get your master's degree will be longer, will be longer. So this commenter brings up a good point. If you're expected to be in school two to four years, right, and I'm being... At that point, I'm being generous. Two to four years, with four years being the maximum amount of time you'll be at school before you get your master's degree. If you're going to be there two to four years before you graduate, and then you got to tack on two years of servitude for to this corporation, you would expect expect to be at this place at least four years. And in this respect, in this respect, this commenter is correct. Now. They, they do say, I'm not really sure what your role in supply chain is, but as someone who did work in that world, it's really crazy right now with all the supply chain issues. Make sure you'd be okay with four to five years in that environment without getting burnt out. I was headhunted out of my role in supply chain after 
3.5 years for a less intensive workload and more pay and was really glad that I funded my education myself as it was really as it really was not a good time they say for me to be paying back thousands in tuition fees it's definitely a huge advantage if you take the company's offer just make sure you're 100% aware of what you're committing to all really great and valid points and now this one is is has even greater value because it's coming from a person who has experience in that field in that industry and what they are saying is essentially what I said before if while you're at school or while you are at work if you aren't working on cultivating a professional network if you aren't working to cultivate a professional reputation and this individual went the latter route obviously maybe subconsciously maybe wasn't doing it actively if they were going to school right because it says here that they funded their education themselves so maybe they were go maybe they did go that route the uh, the, the part-time part-time route or the full-time part-time route or the full-time full-time route right if they're an utter savage and the MBA was an online course <laughs> and they and they took the initiative to knock that shit out within the two years and they funded it themselves more power to them but they unbeknownst to them placed themselves in a position to be recruited to be headhunted by a corporate headhunter for a position that was less intensive they claim and paid them more money now if you can finesse yourself if you can hustle yourself if you can develop yourself professionally to position yourself to be recruited to be afforded an opportunity to be offered offered positions of this caliber i mean it lets you know that what you're doing is righteous that you're becoming a corporate cowboy that you are taking professional that you're taking your professional identity serious right and that your investment in terms of time money and effort are paying dividends in real time also uh well also this is this next comment the next comment after that one says also it's probably unlikely that they actually collect if you left also if what two also <laughs> what the fuck uh also it's probably unlikely that they'd actually collect if you left i'm so that you know that's somewhat dubious depending on uh, on what corporation uh you're working for what type of corporation you're working for uh but you claim i think it was defense was it defense yeah a supply chain at a large defense company Defense, if it's government or private, I mean, there's there's a lot more information that would need to go into um, this person's opinion before they say it's probably unlikely. Um, I mean, it, it depends if um, if whether or not they're viewing their 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 vested bonus in you as something they can collect, right? But if they have some type of agreement with uh the school that they send you to which is another aspect of this of this whole situation is the school you'll be going to will it be one of your choice or will it be pick will it be picked for you right if there's some type of standing agreements between this defense company and the school you'll be uh attending for your mba um there, there may or may not be uh collections at the end of your short-lived at the end of a short-lived tenure with the company right if you should get your mba and not serve out your two years with the company they may or may not collect but on the flip side is that they might be fucking sharks about it and come collect on your bitch ass <laughs> uh the next one says also if you were going to a new job you could always negotiate a signing bonus to cover the cost of the repayment there you go that's the saving grace of that comment right there the first that they, they had me in the first half really questioning whether or not you know they were uh based in reality whether or not they were <laughs> grounded in reality 
as whether or not a company that invested its its own uh, capital in you for you to get an MBA and an education, whether or not they'd come collect. But but the saving grace is that the way capitalism works, if someone else sees value in you, recruits you, comes for you as in a headhunter, like we learned about in this in the previous comments, if they come for you and want you for a position that you know might be less intensive, might be more intensive, might pay more, might pay less, might be in the field that you want to be in, right? You could always negotiate some type of signing bonus whereby they cover, they cover whatever it is you owe, whatever it is the previous company might be trying to collect from having sponsored your education in order for you to sign on and onboard with your new company. Now, I'm going to cut it there because it's about 30 minutes. But if you like this type of content, then I suggest you follow. For the most part, for the most part, I want to say, and, and, and it's only because I don't have defense company supply line experience, right? Supply chain experience. My apologies. If I, I don't have uh, defense supply chain experience, I'm able to give a, a, a more broader stroke in terms of dealing with corporate and moving through it, right? Because it sounds like this person wants to get into an industry and move up, but if what they're after is an MBA and they, they're they prospecting leaving the corporation, they're prospecting leaving the organization, the next one they go to might not even be in defense, right? Right. So the best I could do without, you know, claiming to have experience in, in, in being a defense contractor or, or working supply chain is providing the broader strokes, the broader strokes of dealing with corporate as a corporate cowboy. Now, go ahead and find us on Instagram. It's the Corporate Cowboys with a Z. Uh, the Patreon is active. There are multiple tiers that are available, so feel free to shoot us any funds in the form of donations. They all go towards business expenses and legal fees, as always. If you'd like to send us something directly, there's a PayPal, a Cash App, I believe. A Venmo is also around. Uh, you're a smart cookie. You can find those links. I'm sure they're in the bio of the Instagram. You want to send us some mail? You want to send us some contraband? Wink, wink. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California 95741. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Catch you next time.